The name Girl Scouts has often been associated with God and wholesomeness, but as of late, the Girl Scout brand has been marred by controversy. More and more people are coming forward with evidence linking them to pro-abortion groups like Planned Parenthood, and accusations of feminism and homosexuality have also surfaced. Stay with us as we learn more about the dark side of the Girl Scouts. For several years, Mary Ellen Recton had a great experience as a Girl Scout troop leader for her oldest daughter, Marta. They worked on badges, went to camp, and made many friends. But all that changed after Mary Ellen learned the Girl Scouts of America participated in a meeting sponsored by the UN Population Fund in March of 2010. During the event, a graphic brochure meant to teach teens about sex was passed out by Planned Parenthood. Mary Ellen decided to learn more about the Girl Scouts' involvement in this controversial meeting, and what she discovered greatly concerned her. I found that the Girl Scouts on their website, when they reported about this meeting, they listed the demands of this committee. One of the demands was safe, accessible, and affordable abortion um, for all young people uh, around the world and also comprehensive sex education and it also you know talked about the need for contraception and emergency contraception for young people around the world and these were positioned as demands they were listed on the WAGS which is the World Association of Girl Scouts website the same material was on International Planned Parenthood's website as well word for word verbatim what this said to me was obviously Girl Scouts supports these three points. Now there's a debate out there whether or not Planned Parenthood has a connection with the Girl Scouts. Uh, what are your thoughts and what did you observe? What has been explained to me by the Girl Scouts is that they have no formal relationship with Planned Parenthood. I think the key word there is formal. I think there are a lot of informal relationships. In fact, in 2004, Kathy Cloninger even spoke to the fact that Planned Parenthood did have relationships, informal relationships, in various councils. And who is she? She is the CEO of Girl Scouts USA. Planned Parenthood can be called in to do badge work. As far as internationally, the World Association of Girl Scouts and Girl Scouts USA is very involved, as I said before, working with the United Nations Population Fund. Patty Garibay is the founder of American Heritage Girls, a faith and family-centered organization. It was started over 15 years ago as an alternative to Girl Scouts. Though the Girl Scouts claim there are no formal ties to pro-abortion groups, what Patty has witnessed proves otherwise. Patty, we invited Barbara Boniface, CEO of Girl Scouts of Western Ohio, to comment on camera about some of this controversy, and she refused to do so, but she did provide us with a written statement. And part of that written statement says, and I quote, it is not the role of Girl Scouting to take a position on issues such as abortion, birth control, etc. Now, would you find that to be a true and representative statement of Girl Scouts? I do not. Um, through their affiliations and through the people that work within the Girl Scouts and through the advocacy that the Girl Scouts have done politically, um, they are not um, giving fair representation to the pro-life community. It's always for the pro-choice community, as they like to say. So I disagree with that comment, I do. And um, today, I'm sure there's councils across the nation that are still affiliating with groups like Planned Parenthood to teach that. Um, so if it's true, then they should practice it as being true and not say one thing and do another. Another part of Barbara's statement was that she said, that uh, their chapter does, quote, not currently and has never had an affiliation with Planned Parenthood, end quote. Now, do you think it should be a concern of parents if that particular chapter that they're involved with is not connected to Planned Parenthood? Nationally and internationally, the Girl Scouts are strongly affiliated with pro-choice groups, groups such as International Planned Parenthood Federation and the UNFPA as well, and all girls' membership dues go into a, a budget that helps to pay for the World Association of Girl Scouts and Girl Guides. So there is a money trail there. Your dollars, even no matter how wholesome your own local Girl Scouts are, 
your dollars do help to fund this organization that's heavily involved with the United Nations Population Fund. In a moment, we'll hear from mothers and daughters who were concerned with a Girl Scout curriculum and agenda, and ultimately decided to leave the organization. Look around you. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. This Emmy Award-winning show tackles challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, and adoption, and shows every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Patty Garibay has witnessed many families leaving Girl Scouts due to their ever-growing connection to Planned Parenthood. When parents have taken the time to look into the groups the Girl Scouts are connected with, they find it conflicts with the beliefs and values they hold. Of those girls with their parents who come to American Heritage Girls from the Girl Scouts, what generally do they give as a reason for making that change? Well, today, very much those ties to Planned Parenthood are of great concern to most of the families. And so they're looking for something that would be more aligned with their values, and they are coming in droves to American Heritage Girls. Do you think that the average parent of a Girl Scout understands that there is a link or connection with Planned Parenthood? I don't think they know that. Um, I do think, though, in the New Girls Curriculum, the Journey series, if parents would recognize that and read it with their daughters, they would see that there's a lot of linkages, not just with um, pro-choice groups, but also other groups that may not be aligned with the family's values. Such as? The Media Matters, which is not very balanced. They're the ones that want to get rid of conservative media. Um, the Women in Women's Media Center, their partners are all pro-choice groups. There's just a lot that they, they tell the girls to go to these websites, and I hope the parents will as well, um, and visit and see who the partners and links are, and then be very well aware. Because you know, the Girl Scouts are a choice for some families, but a lot of families would not agree with what they're about. After Mary Ellen Recton discovered the Girl Scouts' views on abortion and sex education lined up verbatim with Planned Parenthood's, she felt compelled to share her findings. She documented her research and voiced her concern to fellow leaders and the Girl Scout Council, but their reaction was much less than she hoped for. They could not deny what I had found on the websites. Their, their argument to it was that this is just a small, a small portion of what we totally publish. Why are you focusing on this? So in the end, do you feel like you were branded a troublemaker and got no results? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I was a troublemaker. And I received a call, in, it was in May of 2010, on a Friday afternoon from Susan Osborne, who basically um, told me that they had seen a copy of what I had written and that she was accepting that as a resignation. Of, as a Girl Scout leader. And I said, you know, I, I, I deny that, I'm not resigning. And um, she was emphatic that I had resigned. Well, what pushed you over the edge to ultimately leave the Girl Scouts? They told me I could remain a parent. That was nice of them, but I could remain a parent uh, and be involved as a parent, but that I couldn't be a Girl, I couldn't be a leader. Um, Quite honestly, my thought was, if this organization is going to handle me this way, and if they're not open to hear my concerns, then it's really not, and all this other stuff I see, um, it's not the organization for my family. Kate Hine and Mary Meyer are two former Girl Scout mothers. Mary's daughters, Erin and Meredith, along with Kate's daughter, Mary, used to be active Girl Scout members. But once they heard about Mary Ellen's concerns, they did some investigating of their own. It just became very clear to my husband and me that um, we didn't like the direction that the Scouts were going in terms of their curriculum and the activities. Um, by the dues that we were paying, we were, in effect, supporting that financially. And uh, we just felt like we could not, we just couldn't support that. 
Was there something in addition to Planned Parenthood that made you uncomfortable? Um, for me, uh, there was a very strong sort of feminist, I guess is the way to put it, bent. And it was all about sort of a strong woman and um, overpowering the men in terms, putting, pitting men against women rather than um, making them comp compatible in what, you know, what Scouts was teaching. Um, there are those who debate back and forth whether or not Planned Parenthood is affecting Girl Scouts in any way. What has been your experience with that? I feel like they associate with the same organizations that promote what Planned Parenthood is promoting, like um, sexuality. And I feel like even though there isn't, there may not be a direct link, I feel like they're in the same class of organizations that promote the same things. And I feel like that's enough connection for me. When we return, we'll learn about some family-friendly alternatives for parents who may be rethinking Girl Scout involvement. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. In 1995, Patty Garibay founded American Heritage Girls as an alternative scout group that placed more emphasis on family values. In the last 15 years, the group's grown to include 375 chapters in 48 states. Today, there are over 14,000 girls involved in American Heritage Girls. When Patty began the organization, she never dreamed of this kind of growth and success. We uh, revolve our program around six program emphases, and that's really to address all of the um, mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical needs of a girl as she grows. And our program actually addresses girls 5 to 18. But we talk a lot about life skills and how important they are to develop strong life skills. We also um, in encourage spiritual development as well as social development, teamwork and confidence through a strong camp program. And there's just so many other facets that we address in a girl's life that it really becomes a transforming uh, ministry for girls. Describe for me some of the differences between American Heritage Girls and the Girl Scouts. Well, American Heritage Girls, first and foremost, is Christ-centered, and that really makes a difference. Um, the Girl Scouts has a secular focus, and American Heritage Girls also allows a girl from 5 to 18 be, to be in the same troop. So it's very family-friendly. And American Heritage Girls is solid, solidly pro-life. Um, we believe in the sanctity of life. We believe in the sanctity of marriage. We believe in Christ-centered principles. And we're very transparent with that. And that's what's important, I think, in American Heritage Girls is we are who we are. We're not for everyone, but we're certainly for a lot of families. I have gotten involved in American Heritage Girls because I wanted to find a way for my daughter to replace all the fun that she missed when we left Girl Scouts. What is the biggest difference you found between Girl Scouts and American Heritage Girls? American Heritage Girls hits me as what Girl Scouts used to be. American Heritage seems to be more skills-based group, um, where you learn, you earn badges and things for learning new skills and bettering yourself from a personal development point of view. With, when I, as I've looked at the new curriculum, what the Girl Scouts is moving to called Journeys, it appears that Girl Scouts is becoming more of a organization to move girls towards community activists. Would you call it a political agenda? I think it's very much a political agenda. 
Um, in fact, when you look at Journeys and a lot of the women that are highlighted in the Journeys curriculum, um, they're very much um, radical feminists. Um, there are many Marxists. There are a lot of gay activists. Um, it's very much a progressive agenda. That's what I see the differences to be. American heritage seems much more like learning to be the best girl you can be. In addition to American Heritage Girls, Mary Ellen's daughter Marta participates in a parent-led group called Little Flowers. She's joined by Mary Hine and Aaron and Meredith Meyer. The group's been meeting for four years and mainly consists of families who left Girl Scouts. The Little Flowers curriculum focuses on learning about virtues, doing crafts, family activities, and service projects. Kate and Mary are grateful their daughters have an alternative that allows them to grow in a community of like-minded young girls. Really, it was a group of friends that together decided that we would like to um, supplement. At that time, our kids were all in Scouts, and we felt like um, there was a spiritual element missing with the Scouts. So we got together and decided to uh, begin with Little Flowers as a way to sort of uh, put that spiritual element in to what they were doing. What have been your experiences with these two alternatives to the Girl Scouts, the Little Flowers and American Heritage Girls? I have been thrilled to, to find this alternative to Scouts. I think the girls have um, been able to enjoy the company of other kids who think similarly to them, who come from families and backgrounds that are all similar to the beliefs and values that my husband and I hold and, and that we aspire to for our kids. Now, you kids, what is it that uh, you like most about the groups that you're involved with, whether it be American Heritage Girls or Little Flowers? I like that all my friends that, that I know are in there. I like it because my best friend's in it. And, um, like all the other girls are like really nice and I feel like I fit in. Marta, tell me about some of your favorite projects or things that you did. Um, I like to like camp, I like camping out in our yard and, and playing bingo at the nursing home and singing songs and Christmas caroling. What'd you like about the nursing home? It's fun pl playing games with the older people. Erin, what was your favorite project? or event? Um, I liked camping out in Lauren's backyard and I liked um, going to the nursing home. Did you have any raccoons during the night when you camped? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wasn't there a no, rooster? There's a rooster. There's a rooster in the morning and she woke everybody up. Yeah, woke everybody up. Really? Yeah. And I liked um, giving this, um, this family um, <laughs> That's what I have to say. Presents, because they didn't um, have any. So how did you organize that project, Meredith? Yeah, we all gave like $12, and then we all put it together, and we shopped for, there was a mom and two kids. We had three groups, I think. We, we split groups. into three groups, and we shopped for the youngest kid. We worked, we and the worked for the money. Yeah, the girls were supposed yeah. to earn the money. How have you seen these organizations impact your daughters? Um, I, I just feel like, like she said earlier about fitting in, um, she doesn't really have that, that pressure to be someone that she isn't, and she can be herself. For my girls to know that, hey, here's you know a group of other kids, we really like them, and they're learning the same thing that we are, I think that's a, a support network for them, and as the kids get older, I hope and you know I'm praying that that they will be able to um, rely on that that support network that we've established at this age. Coming up, we'll hear advice for parents who may have some concerns about Girl Scouts and how important it is to find an organization teaching the values they hold dear. Look around you. Every day, heroes abound in our country. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. 
We'll tackle challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, adoption, and abstinence, and show that every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Childhood and teenage years are extremely critical and impressionable for young girls, so it's important for them to build community with their peers and to be taught valuable lessons they'll carry with them throughout life. Before getting involved in Girl Scouts or another organization, parents need to be sure the values of a group are in line with what they want their girls to be. These organizations can greatly impact the women they eventually become. So to the parents out there that are watching this program and saying, you know, I don't think I want my kids involved in Girl Scouts, what's the first thing they should do? I would say go to their church and find out if there's any alternative programs available. They can do websites, web, uh, web search to find out alternatives. I would encourage the parents um, and the families to do their own research. Um, don't take my word for it. Go and...